Hey everyone, I'm out and about getting a little work done, um, trying to catch up after my sickness. Um, you can probably still hear I'm, I'm not quite all the way better yet, but I'm, uh, I'm enough better uh, to get things rolling again. So I apologize that, that um, feedback has been a bit late on your reading worksheets and your discussions. Um, I'm getting back to it as quickly as I can. I wanted to just make a few comments about uh, the Unit 4 reading worksheet assignment. That one, of course, focused on Alan Knight's article on Cardinismo. Um, most of you did a very good job of picking out the evidence, the interpretations that Knight used. And you also emphasized that this is an article that was not written for a general audience. Um, that is very much the case. Um, I actually knew it was kind of a difficult article, and I threw it to you to see um, how you would handle it. And I think, again, for the most part, you all did a very good job. Um, there, are, I, I didn't just give you this article because it was difficult. Um, also, let me uh, point that out. What Alan Knight does is um, he really kind of lays bare the way that his stories work. Uh, so, for example, the first several pages of the article, um, from 73 through 78 and a half, um, those outline some key questions about Cardinismo, and then they discuss the historiography of Cardinismo. Historiography is essentially the history of history. Um, it's looking at ways historical interpretations about a certain event have changed over time. So for example, he looks at different schools of thought, uh, going from some of the earliest historians of the Mexican Revolution, who were pretty celebratory of the revolution itself and of uh, Cardenismo's reforms, including uh, Lázaro Cárdenas' focus on land redistribution for many Mexicans, which was a promise of the revolution. Um, and then there were revisionists who came back and said, wait, you know, the revolution wasn't uh, this great uh, thing for the masses that people have been saying it was. It didn't actually change that much. But Cardenas, he did an excellent job. Um, so kind of taking him out of the revolutionary context, at least uh, to an extent, saying he's a sort of bright spot. That Cardenismo was a very strong moment for uh, the legacy of the Mexican Revolution. You know, of course, the revolution ended, at least the violent phase ended in about 1920. Um, Cardenas was president of Mexico from 1934 to 1940. And so what Cardenas did, again, is he was helping to construct a strong party, a strong state, um, and he was looking to um, make good on the promises of the revolution, trying to help the plight of everyday Mexicans. Those are all very true about what he was doing. Knight also looks at the way Marxist scholars have evaluated Cardenismo. So he does all of that to explain this is what has been written in the past. That's the, the goal of historiography. He does all of that and then he says, and this is what I think. So on page 79 he comes out and he lays out four different points um, in the first full paragraph on that page. And he says, that according to his reading of the uh, evidence and the sources, that Cardenismo was more jalopy than juggernaut. So it wasn't an all-powerful force. It wasn't operating in a vacuum. Again, these seem like they should be pretty straightforward things, but they're not things that historians before had really considered. Um, they thought Cardenismo sort of just rolled over the top of everything that was going on in Mexico. And, you know, for all... Um, intents and purposes was all-powerful. Of course, if you look at the election of uh, Avila Camacho in 1940, who was very opposite <laughs> uh, to Cardenas, he was a much more conservative, far less radical um, former military general as president, he of course did carry on the continuance of the uh, one ruling party, but he didn't carry on any of uh, the impetus for reforms that came during the Cardenas years. So I point that out to show what Alan Knight was talking about later in the article when he lays out his evidence for his argument that um, Cardenas had to deal with a lot of different forces. He couldn't just impose his will. Um, he had to appease um, those forces that were more conservative in Mexican politics, the Mexican military. Um, he had to look out for competing interests um, in a number of ways. And so, again, that's something that he, I think he does very well at because he lays out the historiography 
he lays out his argument, says what it is, and then he goes ahead and explains the evidence. Um, and so, again, that's the key to thinking about what was going on with that article. Um, again, I, I chose it not because it was difficult, because it laid, but because it lays bare um, the way historians work. And Alan Knight himself, um, I also wanted to mention, um, he is a eminent scholar of the Mexican Revolution. He wrote a two-volume book on the Mexican Revolution, just titled The Mexican Revolution, Volume 1, Volume 2, um, which still stands as one of the uh, key anthologies of the revolution today. Um, so anyone studying that event looks to Alan Knight um, and others, of course, but, but he is a big name in the field. Um, I had the pleasure of meeting him for the first time um, last September in Mexico City uh, during a symposium that I'm part of. Uh, he's a member of the symposium. There are 15 of us who are writing articles, putting them together in a, a book that will be published in the future uh, about the history of violence on the U.S.-Mexico border. And I met Alan Knight. I wasn't quite sure what to expect of him. You know, he's, he's an older British gentleman um, who, again, has a larger-than-life reputation. But he was one of the, the best people I've met. Um, he was very kind, not full of himself, um, very helpful in terms of providing feedback on my work and on everyone else's work. Um, that was the, the purpose of the symposium. Um, we're, we're all meeting again um, in a few weeks, in the middle of April in Dallas, to have one more round of uh, work on all of our articles and uh, then to go forward with final revisions and getting it published. So anyway, I just wanted to give you some of, those, some of that information about Alan Knight, about what he was doing in the article. I hope that helps a little bit. Um, and uh, I hope this was a meaningful exercise to read his piece and to evaluate it in the worksheet.